So much for stopping by my channel Nicole flower house my name is Taryn and this channel is all about my cut flower garden I'm located in zone 7b the first thing I'm starting out with in this video is a quick shot of these zinnias I do have a lot of zinnias planted in front of my rain barrels, but I'm going to be working on getting the plumbing done on these barrels so I am taking all of these flowers out so I can access the underneath. And here is what it looks like once I took those flowers out. It was kind of sad because they were still producing, but they weren't really that prolific. There was a lot of pollinators on them, but there's plenty of other flowers throughout the garden for them to use. So my rain barrel system I built using the system from bluebarrelsystems.com. So I'm not going to do a tutorial on how I did it. They have plenty of videos and everything you need to get set up. The deck that the barrels are sitting on is a new addition. This picture here shows you how I used to have the barrels, which was on cinder blocks. Having the deck professionally built gives me a lot more height to the deck, so more pressure in the system, and also it's perfectly level. My cinder blocks were not level. We did the best we could, but they still could have used some work. Now here is a look at the plumbing as it stands. I've moved the system around from different locations and different arrangements, so that's why it's not currently connected. I had the barrels empty all summer long because we were getting the house exterior painted and they needed to be away from the house to get that done. So my husband and I worked on this recently and here is the plumbing all put together. Now everything is connected and all ready to go. And after we were finished getting everything connected, I did run some hose water through it to test for leaks so you can see that it comes out here at the end. All of the barrels are connected to each other underneath and then there is one diverter in the downspout which will fill up the barrels. And since they're all level and plumbed from beneath, they will fill up and empty evenly across the system. Thank you. 
Here are some of my dahlias. Just a little update here. I'm working on staking these dahlias up. A lot of them have fallen over. The Horta Nova just did not work. Um, neither did the corralling method for me, so getting these stakes in here to individually stake them up has been working well. I have way too many dahlias to get all of them staked up probably by the end of the season, but I'll do the ones that I can. I am risking puncturing tubers by putting stakes in the ground after I planted these. So that is something I needed to take into consideration. I'm kind of looking at where the sprouts are coming out of the ground and trying to stay far enough away from that that I'm not likely putting the stake through the tubers, but that's always a possibility that I could accidentally kill the plant. This variety right here is called Otto's Thrill, I believe. It's a dinner plate sized dahlia. It's really pretty and the blooms are bigger than my hands. This section over here has my mom's, and I was getting a little nervous that they hadn't bloomed, but it looks like they are budding up. So I was curious to see when I had blooms last year, and it looked like it wasn't until the end of October and early November that these bloomed. So they look like they're on track and they should be just fine. Here is what they looked like last year. This footage is from November 6th, so you can see how pretty the fall colors are, the orange and the dusky pink color, and so I'm really looking forward to this flush of blooms coming up soon. My eucalyptus plants are doing well. These are two years old, so I'm hoping to overwinter these again and keep them going. This celosia here is a really pale pink color. I love the color on this. I am curious though, there are a few branches producing this fan-like shape instead of the traditional sprays that the other branches are producing, so I'm not sure if that's normal or not to have two different shapes on the same plant. Here are my rudbeckia plants. Now these were severely infested with spider mites. You can see the damage on the leaves, but they're also producing new growth. I completely cut back as much of the damaged section of the plants as I could and all of the blooms off of them. You can see how terrible these ones look, but they're actually putting on new growth. And in my zone 7B, these should be perennial, so they may recover and give me early blooms in the spring. Here is more footage of the dahlia patch. I'm getting beautiful blooms and a lot of buds and fresh new green growth. I'm still struggling with spider mites and a little bit of fungal disease over here and possibly some disease from grasshoppers. I'm still needing to look into that, but I've been trying to keep the grass mowed really short in the pathways, keeping the dead and damaged foliage pruned off of these and I'm just deadheading them very regularly. I'm trying to come through here every day or every other day and clean them up and it looks like they're recovering good. These are just some carrots that I never harvested and they went to flower. So I'm really excited to have these. I have some arrangements that I'm going to be making this weekend for a client. So I am happy to have a few of those very delicate lacy flowers to add in there. Now over here, I'm so excited about this. I've been waiting so long for this. I finally have berries on one of my shrubs. This is a winter berry plant. I'm not sure, it might be berry heavy. I'm not really sure how to take care of this. This is the first season that I've had berries and I don't think I'm gonna cut too much off of this plant cause it's pretty young. I may just observe it for this season and see what it looks like. Now, of course, I'll probably be tempted and take a few branches off, but leave most of them. 
This is some hollyhock foliage. I have yet to get flowers off of it because it keeps getting eaten over and over again by either rabbits or deer, but it's still putting on new growth and looks pretty cool. And this is just the view of the dahlia patch from the other side. These are some beautiful Cafe Ole dahlias here. The blooms aren't quite as big as they normally are, but I actually don't mind. They're easier to work with when they're small like that. This is a second sowing of zinnias that I had planted a while back. I have a video on that, so you can check those earlier videos out to see that. But I basically amended this bed with horse manure that was three years old, so it was completely composted down, and these are all direct seeded. They're looking really good. Um, there is powdery mildew on the foliage, and that is just because I live in an area with very high humidity, and so when I use these, I just make sure to strip all of the foliage off and leave none of the leaves on there, but they're still so pretty. I love them. This one right here is a giant, Benary's giant coral. This one is Oklahoma salmon. I think Oklahoma salmon might be my favorite variety. It's hard to pick one though. This patch of gumfrina has really responded to some hard pruning. Obviously there's still ones in here that need cut back, that they're spent and elongated, but there's also new fresh blooms. This shrub, I forget what it's called, so I'm not gonna say it. If I find it, I'll put it up on the screen, but it's also getting berries. The berries on this plant are pink. They start out this really light green color and they kind of fade into a pink. There's not many berries on this, but this plant is brand new to me. So I think I've only had it about a year now. I think I planted it last fall, so it's coming up on its second fall. So some of them aren't getting enough sun either. So I'm not sure how well these will continue to do, but it's exciting to see some berries on there. And also I'm starting to prep the beds for fall planting. So I've cleared a lot of the summer annuals out. I'm going to add the horse manure to these beds as well and some fresh mulch. What I'll be planting soon are ranunculus and anemones. I'll get those in. And then later in the winter will be tulips. These cosmos have put on another flush of blooms. I wasn't really expecting that when I cut them back but this cranberry color on them is very nice. had to wait almost a week to get any rain to test out the rain barrel system. I did notice though that there is 
rain going into the barrels, but there's quite a bit coming out of the downspout as well. I don't know if you can hear it going in there or not. But when we got our gutters replaced, the downspout diverter fit in there, but I think it's too small. Our new gutters are larger than our old gutters, so it is collecting some water, but there's quite a bit of opportunity to collect more. So I'm just gonna hop on to Blue Barrel's website, see what they have to see if I can get a different downspout diverter that fits the newer, larger downspouts, and then I'll be able to collect more rain more quickly. I'm glad I tested that out this fall before any of the freezing weather has come so I can get a replacement part and get working on that so when all the spring rain comes, I'll be ready to go. And that is all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And the best way you can support me and my channel is to subscribe and share it with your flower loving friends. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.